so uh, so welcome everyone to the testing conversational ai strategy to automation session by shama ugale we are glad they can join us today so without further delay over to you shama for this hey, wonderful thank you so much devish um so let's start people um uh, and uh, i just wanted to you know um ask one question before i begin uh, have you ever heard of tea anyone of you heard of tea uh you can give thumbs up um so a uh, tea was a microsoft bot or uh, released on twitter and i just love this example whenever i discuss about conversation ais uh, back in march uh, 2016 uh, microsoft launched this bot uh, to, and this was designed to have conversations with twitter users uh, to learn and mimic the human um, you know behavior by copying the speech patterns so what that was the intent and it was supposed to engage with the people uh, aged between 18 to 24 and let's see what happened okay as part of that uh, experiment so um, as usual uh, she started with a very sweet hello world message and in few minutes uh, we could see that she became you know hitler's fan and few more minutes later uh, we could see her uh, you know that she wanted to teach a mexican a lesson by building a wall and in couple of more time she also became racist and that was enough damage made to the brand and uh, they had to shut down this within 24 hours uh let's see another example which is cnn news bot and this bot was designed uh, to you know uh, give the news updates and the user tries to do the unsubscribe and it did it says yes i unsubscribe but the next day it sends uh, you know it continues to send alerts so it continued to send um, you know alerts and then uh, we could see that uh, something went wrong but what failed i don't think bot did not understand bot did understand it did its job but then i think underlying integration failed here right uh, another example uh, poncho so this is a weather bot it is supposed to give you the weather information for a given location okay and with this conversation at least i could clearly see when the user asks about an umbrella or asks about uh, the weekend uh, weather information it fails to understand that pretty straight forward right uh, that we use on day to day basis weekends um so before i you know um now that we have seen uh, enough of the examples how they can fail and uh, what can go wrong um we need to understand what makes the conversational ai so different from any other uh, traditional uh, softwares and what are the challenges here while we do test them right the first thing is they are self learning systems then what do you mean by self learning systems most of them are uh, built using natural language processing uh, you know machine learning deep learning algorithms and these are under constant training and improvement on day to day basis so the tests that you are writing today with the expected outcome may change in the next run okay because they have got trained and having such a non deterministic component in your system under test which will make the software testing completely useless because it is changing as soon as you cannot tell the reason whether it was a failure or it was a defect or it was an improvement okay uh, that becomes a challenge and when using a chatbot or a voice bot for that matter or uh, either uh, you know there are no in, uh, interaction barriers for the users as compared to any other traditional web application or a mobile application where you have a, a ui which allows a predefined means of interaction it will have pages buttons links to navigate to give information but then in bots uh, you have to cover all that kind of unexpected user input in a very decent way plus the non deterministic user interactions such as a uh, human language the way of speaking texting um also using the phrases jargon short forms you know tons of different possibilities makes it really challenging for you to cover all the tests and also uh, if you this is specifically for voice bots if you see um on an average at least we have 7 and a half billion humans out there today right and that means that i have 
seven and a half billion vo uh, voice samples with different textures. Okay, and for UI, it does not just matter who is clicking the button, who is calling that API, who is uh, filling in that form. But then for a bot, it does matter because the voice is in action. And before I just you know jump into talking how to strategize such kind of uh, uh, application testing and how uh, you know how we can proceed with that, let us see how it works in a nutshell so that it will make our life easier and uh, we could do strategizing even better. So this is in a nutshell how it works like um, the uh, you know the user may have input coming through either uh, voice or either chat, text format, and any 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 platform it might be you know like uh, your skype your twitter or whatsapp or telegram or also uh, the bots like alexa a google assistant right and what it does is the next year it takes the input from these platforms and it is read by your nlp layer and nlp layer will process this based on the input um, and it would direct these uh, to maybe you know third party or internal APIs or also the databases and it will try to find or to convert the uh, user speech or text into a structured data by uh, tokenizing it first that is it will uh, you know break down the user's input into the series of words uh, called tokens and then these tokens are representative with different value in the application. The next thing is it will also do sentiment analysis that it will try to study or uh, what is a user experience being like. It will transfer the inquiry to the human whenever necessary. Um, and uh, also it does the normalization where it is trying to correct your uh, typos and uh, you know uh, trying to understand your uh, phrases. Uh, so uh, this is what uh, you know NLP layer does in a nutshell, and then it will also uh, do the dependency parsing, which is just checking for what are the subject, what the user is trying to do, and what are the entities that I can extract. Think of these entities just like your variables. So this is what the NLP layer does for us. So let us just see an example before you know we could understand it completely. So here is an example. Let us say that uh, I'm I'm trying to book tickets, and this is the user utterance that the uh, user is giving as an input. Okay, and this input says I want to book tickets from Mumbai to London. Now, what my NLP will do is it will try to understand the user intent, and here it is booking tickets. And next, it is uh, trying to extract the values. That is the entities, what we call them as. And the entities here are the source and destination, Mumbai to London. Okay. And now we have the clear idea what the utterance look like, uh, what is the intent of the user, and what are the entities. Correct. Okay? So now let us see how I can uh, strategize testing these. So. Um, In this uh, you know, talk, we are going to explore all the strategies to design a test case and we will move forward. How do I automate the tests that I have already designed? And also we will see what are the other things that I have to consider while I'm testing such applications. And um, my name is Shaman and I have been working um, you know, on uh, testing the bots, AI, NLP so far. And I just wanted to share my experience with you so that it could help you to better strategize if you come across any such applications. Uh, so let's begin. I'll talk about uh, this test strategy. Uh, first, definitely, we start with uh, designing our test cases, that is manual tests. Um, and then we will move uh, to automation testing. We'll see how do we automate. And then we will also uh, you know, analyze, once I have the results, I'll have to analyze the performance metrics, how it is performing, define the KPIs, and then take a decision whether I can productionize it or not. And secondly, um, not, uh, last but not the least, do the crowd testing, which is very important. We'll discuss this later. So let's begin. Um, in test case design, we are going to categorize this with uh, you know dif uh, seven different categories, and we will design test cases for each of the categories. And the first category is personality and onboarding. So make sure your bot has a personality; uh, it has a name associated with it. If you remember, uh, if I say Alexa, what does come to your mind? 
you know what Alexa is, right? It's a bot, right? If I say um, a Google Assistant, you know what exactly it means. So they have their own personality. They have names. I could uh, relate to them. If I go and talk to a person and don't, I don't know the name. The first thing is what I'm going to do is as icebreaker, I ask the name and then start greeting and then start my conversation. So the same thing should go with your bots as well. Give them a name. And the personality matters because if it is a sales bot, if it is uh, you know a bot which is uh, in the customer, I mean a customer service, they have to be polite. Uh, sales bot have to be a little aggressive, right? Uh, so this is what the personality matters. And then onboarding is where the bot will tell you what it is capable of doing for you, introduce itself, and then uh, give you options what you can uh, do. Right. So that way it will minimize the conversations and it, you can get straight to the point by knowing its ability. So write all the kind of tests around that. So if you see an example here, uh, still, you know, uh, it is uh, directly jumping into uh, asking a zip code. And when the user is trying to engage with the spot by doing a small talk, it does not understand. All it needs is a zip code. It does not understand anything. So. This is what you have to keep in mind that it has to also engage with people to do a small talk, introduce, and then move on to the topic when the user is comfortable going ahead. Right. Uh, next is intelligence. Uh, in intelligence, you might want to test for uh, multi step conversations. How does a bot remember? For example, uh, if uh, you are giving an address now uh, for a delivery. Uh, there are, you know, uh, different kind of people, right? Uh, like, let us see this. So uh, the person might give you every component of the address in separate lines. Or there are people who type everything at once and then send, right? But then bot has to understand when to stop or when to process that. So that is uh, the intelligence of it. Uh, does it handle it better way? You might want to test it. You might also want to test whether it remembers, um, you know, uh, going back uh, to uh, the conversation. Here, if you see, uh, it uh, wanted to uh, go back to the conversation um, and see what all information the user has given, remember it, and process the information, but not with every single step ask the same uh, information again and again. So you should remember what the user has already given you input. Remember, we don't have a UI here. I have to collect all the information that I have and remember and then process all of that at once, right? So have those test cases as well. Navigation, this is very important. Um, with my uh, you know, web application or a mobile application, I can go back to the previous step uh, by clicking the back button, right? And I can make the changes to the inputs that I have given, right? Uh, but then with bots, you cannot do that. It's a conversation flow, okay? Let us see this example. The user is, uh, you know, um, trying to do the pickup, but then when the user uh, sees that the time, um, the open times of the store are different, uh, they, uh, he wants to now uh, change uh, to pickup. But then the bot does not understand that. What happens here is uh, bot just fails to understand and make a change from a delivery to pickup. Right. So uh, the, the user could not go back. Another example, the user is trying to do shopping. I uh, wanted to buy uh, four bananas by by mistake. Uh, the user says four apples and then corrects it uh, you know, immediately. But what bot does is it does not correct it, but it adds four bananas and four apples as well. So it it did not understand going back to the conversation and making those changes. Right. So these are the kind of test cases also that you have to include. Error management. This is again very important. In UI, you will get an error message saying that this went wrong. Please enter this. Please enter that. Right. But then in bot again, it's a conversation flow. Uh, it has to understand uh, what you're trying to say. And if it is not designed to do what you are asking, it, it, it has to give you options very gracefully. So that is feeling very gracefully. Not that if uh, think about uh, talking to a person, every question that you ask, the person simply says, sorry, I can't help. Sorry, sorry, I can't understand. It is very annoying, right? Same happens with the bots as well. If every time the bot is giving you a response is that, sorry, I don't understand. I am afraid I don't understand. That's not the way you might want to handle. You might want to handle by giving user an option 
that this is what I'm designed to do. Why don't you, um, you know, ask me these questions, which I understand. Something like that. Handle the failures gracefully and try to move forward with giving options to the user so that the user could pick one of them. This is again very important uh, understanding, right? Um, every user has a different way of texting, using emojis. Nowadays, at least you can create your own emoji, right? Uh, so think of that. You send such emojis and the bots should understand that and then respond. Um, also think of uh, sending uh, links like you know, the media videos, pictures, um and uh, you know short forms phrases local language and also the context for example uh what do you understand uh, by uh, selenium if i ask you right um if i ask you uh, if i ask a person who is working in it industry what is selenium their understanding of selenium is different it is a automation tool correct and uh, what about uh, uh, a chemist if i go and ask uh, hey, uh, what, uh, what's selenium? What is his understanding or her understanding? It's completely different. It's a chemical, right? So understanding a particular word in the context is very important. And that testing also you have to do. Whether the bot understands the context, okay? Have those test cases as well. Uh, if you see here, uh, the user is trying to give an emoji and bot correctly responds and uh, identifies that. And uh, next is speed and accuracy. Um, with UI, if you're loading a used data, you know you're getting a load of the user knows, okay, this is being processed. But with bot, uh, you ask something and bot is processing that. Meanwhile, you might want to see how is your bot responding while it is processing a you know, huge response or it is taking time. Uh, why not uh, you know, tell your user that, hey, you know what, I'm processing, just hold on there. Uh, just this example, I just love this example where the bot tells you, uh, you know, before you three people approximately waited for two minutes of time to get this uh, response. So um, engage the uh, you know user in the small talk instead and then give the response. That was beautifully handled. And secondly, just don't want to throw any response just like that without thinking at the user but then I want to answer accurately, right? For example, here, um, fine, uh, it is en engaging the user with a small talk. Um, the bot asks, how would you describe a term bot to your grandma? And the user says, my grandma is dead. Uh, without understanding the sentiment behind it or, or what it is, it gives you, a, you know, um, a normal response, a generic response, all right, thank you for your feedback. That is completely annoying, right? So you might want to test uh, such scenarios as well. Uh, what it is responding, it the response is not important, but what it is responding and whether it is accurate to the context is more important. Understanding the user's intent and responding to the intent is important. So have the test cases around all of these as well. Okay, and there is another ex uh, example here. Uh, it. It just does not understand what the user is trying to say and continues sending messages, right? So that said, uh, we now have all the test cases, suppose, uh, around all the categories that I can think of of a bot, and I have uh, created my test cases. Now the next step is I'm going to automate that. Uh, to automate, I'm going to use Botium as part of the stock, and we will see how we can uh, do it, okay? And in nutshell, a Botium is a platform where it is uh, it is suite of open source tools as well as it has an enterprise edition where you get even more uh, features um, and uh, it consists of a board where it will allow you to integrate or run your test cases on platforms like Slack or Telegram, WhatsApp, wherever you are deploying it. And then it also has a lot of uh, connectors and NLP engines like if you're using your uh, backend NLP as dialogue flow or IBM bots in Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Lewis. There are tons of them and all are supported as part of Botium. You can use this, connect to these NLP engines, and then you can also use this through CLI or you can have a beautiful UI, which is Botium Box. I'll show you in the demo. Uh, and uh, you need not to have any uh, programming background uh, or you need not to write any code as such uh, when you're using the bottom box, but then 
if you're writing your code, um, you can use your CLI and put it under CI CD as well, or through bottom box also you can integrate that your with your CI CD. Okay, let's quickly jump onto a demo um, without wasting time. So I have my files here, okay, and what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to run using Botium CLI and I'm going to run it with Mocha. Okay, while I run these test cases. Let me quickly show that I ran uh, some time ago and let us see the report. So it executed all the test cases. I had around uh, 15 uh, different test categories and two of them failed. And it says uh, that it failed for some reason. What response was this? Expected was this. Okay. And the same here. Uh, I was trying to test with a picture, but then it did fail to, uh, you know, uh, respond to a picture. I'm sure you're confused what I did right now, right? I just had a bunch of uh, some files here. I started running it, if you could see, and I showed you some reports, random reports, but then we don't know what happened, okay? But then let us see what happens step by step. Okay. First is I'm going to set up my volume. Okay. I, it is a uh, node based. So you will have to have node installed on your system. And you can install using npm, which is a package manager by this, um, you know, a simple command npm install hyphen g globally install botium CLI. Then I'll do init, which uh, it is going to initialize the project and it's going to add two files. One is the bottom.json file and the conversation file. Okay. And then I can run the test using Mocha. Now, what are these files? So bottom.json file is a file which it uh, uses to configure and connect to your bot. Okay. Uh, think of this. Uh, I'm, I'm sure people are uh, you know, aware of uh, Selenium and APM. And if you're using that, you would know what are the capabilities. Correct. Uh, the capabilities uh, are like your desirable capabilities that you can use to connect to your bots. So that is where exactly we use the same thing in Botium as well. And we would put those in the Botium.json file. I will show you a sample Botium.json file. Here it is. I'm just telling the name of the project. I am going to give the source. Where is my code? And I'm going to give certain arguments. This is a simple JSON. And if I want to run it locally, I might want to uh, tell I want to run it on Chrome. I want to connect to, uh, you know, WebDriver IO. This is one of the connectors where you can run your test cases on, um, you know, a browser. And you could also run your test cases on different devices, different platforms, or uh, using one of the uh, tools such as, uh, you know, uh, Source Labs. Connect to it, define all your capabilities here. If you look at this section, it is exactly like your Selenium and uh, your, uh, you know, um, APM. So you can define all of these capabilities where it will connect to your uh, devices and run the test cases. Okay. And the next is the conversation file. The convo files are nothing but your test cases. Now, the test cases can be written either in simple, uh, straightforward text format or in a notepad or in an Excel sheet or in a CSV file or whatever you're comfortable with. Or if you like coding, you can write the JavaScript code as well. So let us see how we write the test cases. The first line is the name of the test file. Okay, hello.conversation. What I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to do a uh, greeting. Okay, this is the name of the test case. And then there is a section called as hash me. And then there is hi, and then there is hash bot, then there is, uh, you know, the response. So whatever you're giving as part of hash me, that is the user input that you're giving to bot. Okay. And followed by hash bot is the response that you're expecting from your bot. Think of this as an assertion and think of this as a, a simple input. Okay. Uh, now, if you think of a bot, right, do you think always this test case is going to pass? What do you think? So uh, not always, right? Uh, think of this. Uh, good morning. If I if I ping my bot in the afternoon, 
it would not say good morning, but it might say good afternoon. And that is what I need to test. But how do I maintain all of these validations? Do I need to write those many test cases? No, not at all. Just the way we do uh, parameterization in our automation test cases with different tools. I can do it here as well, where I can uh, create an utterance file and put all the possible ways that I can talk to my bot. Uh, I can say hi, I can say hello, I can say hey, right? I can put all of those possibilities and then use the name of the file there. So what this bot is going to do is it is going to parameterize this test case and your in input has so many different parameters. It will test this application and test this uh, scenario for every single uh, input from your hello utterance. And how do I put assertions and validations here? I can use another utterance file and use that utterance file in my bot. So what will happen? It will pick each of the, uh, you know, example uh, that you have put in hello utterance and it will assert and look for any of these occurrences. So any of this occurrence is good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. If anything of this is responded, your test case would pass because it might depend on time as well, right? So next is how can I um, send in emojis or pictures or links? I can do that by um, you know, giving uh, the input using the keywords like buttons. If uh, if you remember, there are uh, if you have seen the bots will give you certain buttons or links as well to click on. You can interact with them using the keyword button, or you can also send a picture or an emoji or a link or a video using the keyword like uh, media. And when validation, you could also uh, use what the bot is sending, right? And the next is how do you want to end, uh, you know, run the test cases on either your browsers because your bots can be embedded into your browsers. Uh, if you have seen uh, when you're trying to search for something, uh, you get the pop up where bot is asking you if you need any help and it can assist you. Right. So it can be integrated and embedded in your uh, web applications or it can be a, a separate uh, bot posted on any of the platforms like Slack or Messenger or to help you to uh, help you with the orders, right? Or it can be embedded inside your uh, mobile application as well. For example, Swiggy is one of the food delivery applications in India. Uh, it has, if you want to raise, uh, you know, return request or you want to refund, uh, you can use the bot and uh, you, you can connect to the customer care, which behind the scenes bot is responding. Or you can run if you have, you know, your bot on multiple platforms. I want to test it across multiple platforms. I uh, just I was showing you the uh, uh, bottom.json that I can uh, mention all the different platforms uh, and uh, define the capabilities. And uh, those test cases can be run on different uh, platforms, right? So what next? I have tested it. Um, I have automated it. I can put it on the CI CD as well. But then as part of the next steps, I might uh, want to see how my application is behaving based on the responses that I get. Uh, uh, for that, I have, might want to remember that my models are self-learning. So all my test cases not might pass every time, but then I need to validate, do the analysis, and then I might want to take a decision based on my analysis do I need to uh, make this as a production candidate or not, right? But then uh, the underlying things would, uh, you know, remain, right? Like, I mean, the underlying things where I need to train my bot based on the kind of responses I see from the users uh, remain constant. So I might want to also strategize how do I train my bot? How frequently should I do? And uh, based on my analysis, I'll also have to take a decision whether it is a bot failure or I need to improvise, I improvise on training my bot. So let us see an example. Okay, let us say that I want to train my toddler uh, with uh, two of the English alphabets A and B, and I train uh, my toddler with these pictures. I show uh, continuously and repeat this, and I want my toddler to memorize A for apple, and this is the picture of apple. B for ball, and this is the picture of ball. Now. Uh, after, uh, you know, a, a week's time, I want to test whether my toddler has learned or not. So it is a test time. 
So what I now do is I'll call my toddler and tell, hey, what is this? Right? And my toddler says, oh, this is an apple. Oh, I'm, I'm like confused. Apple? No. Okay, let me try with the next one. Uh, um, what's this? Okay. And my toddler is now confused um, and says, I'm sorry, I don't understand this. So what happened? I taught my toddler uh, for a week's time and uh, I, I felt here uh, my toddler learned. But then when I test, it's completely different. Uh, my toddler recognizes a ball as an apple and apple uh, does not recognize at all. So what happened? It, is it something to do with the learning capabilities or I have to improvise on my teaching skills? All right. So what do you think? I need to improvise on that? Yes, I might want to think about, uh, you know, how do I give different samples of apples and different samples of ball so that my toddler learns everything, right? So let's fix that and train it, correct? And once I train with all the samples, now my toddler will be in a position to identify an apple and ball and differentiate between them. That it is not just a red color, uh, you know, circular object that is ball or, uh, you know, um, or, and my uh, apples are not always red, right? Um, so with this, we do understand that training data is again very important and your underlying database or your bot is only as intelligent as your data. So make sure you keep analyzing your data and you keep training it um, every now and then to see how it is performing. But then how do I know how it is performing? For that, you need to define the KPIs and you'll have to evaluate those matrices. What kind of KPIs can I do? So in our testing, we do, uh, you know, defect matrix, uh, how it is performing, what are the different defects that we're getting, right? Uh, traceability matrix, uh, 2CD coverage and defect density. Same way um, if for NLPs, I can track something called as confusion matrix. It is going to give me uh, the false positives and false negatives. That is uh, what is, I mean, just the previous example, false positive is your ball, uh, you know, uh, is an app, something like that, right? So, and uh, based on the confusion matrix, I can derive multiple parameters. And these are uh, some of them, uh, accuracy, precision, and these are the formulae that we can use. This can be all automated. Uh, we need not to calculate that for every run. And the next is uh, we have to do it on every build basis. So how do I do that? I will just show you uh, this on bottom box. I was talking before. A uh, bottom box is again uh, the same thing that we did previously. We can do with bottom box. I can have my chatbots registered here, and I can have all my test cases here. I can keep it on Git, and I can connect to my Git repo, and uh, I can then run the test cases. Okay, um, by you know putting the name of the bot and the test set that I want to run. Um, and uh, as part of the analysis, there is something called as bottom coach. And using bottom coach is what I can, uh, you know, uh, see how it is performing. And this is the confusion matrix that I was talking about. So what it will do is it will uh, it will give you um, the list of all the utterances your bot has identified and all the utterances it should have been identified correctly. So if you see all of these greens. If everything is going fine, you will see the diagonal with all greens. That uh, What this is trying to tell you is uh, the intent, uh, how uh, are you doing? Uh, the, whenever you asked what, it responded with how are you doing? But then if you see these two outliers, you're trying to check uh, the balance, uh, but then it mistakenly identified that uh, uh, what's possible. And one uh, it, uh, occurrence, it mistakenly identified by account balance check but it was supposed to be earning check okay so these are the outliers so you'll have to see that why did not it understand why is there this ambiguity and then try to uh, see so if you click on this it will give you the uh, prediction confidence and it will also tell you what was the predicted intent and what was the expected intent and if you click on this further you will uh, see the utterances itself so it's the email contents uh, surgery message contains so there are you know uh small ambiguities that you see here 
and you might want to improvise on training because uh, the remember uh, when you're uh, con having the conversation with bot the user is always right right because the user knows what he, he or she wants but the bot has failed to understand so this is the basic assumption that we always go of when while we are doing the analysis and try to analyze what are these utterances which were uh, not understood by the bot and how we can train them or how I can improvise on my uh, NLP itself. And if I look at uh, one of the instances, which was, uh, you know, pretty fair, I can show you that as well. Um, so if you see, I just ran, um, you know, one test yesterday. Uh, which you know had a couple of uh, good samples, I would say. Uh, I can go in bottom coach and then I can analyze this. If you see, I see a good number which are passing. Uh, typically, this is how you will see. But then there is one utterance which was failed to understand. And that one occurrence was understood as banking a view activity. But it was supposed to be the uh, banking account opening. Right, and there was one incidence where it failed to understand and mistakenly identified that as a language spot, but it was supposed to be identified that as a, you know a different utterance. So uh, this is how I can analyze and get into uh, you know the content and intents and utterances to see how it is performing, and as the next step. I will also have to make sure that I'm not only testing the NLP layer. So everything that we discussed right now was how to test your NLP layer specific things. But then you remember, uh, we have all the other components of the application as well, still up and running. My NLP is only understanding the user intents and extracting the entities and processing it. But then what it does next is it might be just calling an end, uh, endpoint, an API might be it is internal api or it might be it is external api and then reading the response and giving it to the end user but then the business logic again still remains on your api side so you might want to thoroughly test your apis as well you want to thoroughly do the performance testing to see how the bot can handle the load you'll have to do security testing because the user here is entering the data the personal information and uh, it's it is not supposed to be stored um at your backend and it should not use that data for anything else all right um so you'll have to keep that in mind the data security aspect as well and also the database testing because you are involving a lot of data and every time you are fetching your data from the databases you might want to test that thoroughly as well and all the other kind of tests that we perform this is just a very few things that I have picked up. And uh, last but not the least, we'll also have to do crowd testing. As part of crowd testing, what I'm doing is I'll have to do, you know, I'll select the different genders, age groups, professions, uh, different language, local languages, localites, and, uh, you know, use uh, these bunch of people, identify this bunch of people, and ask them to test my bot. That is just interact with my bot. With using this, I'll be able to check my chatbot's performance. Again, uh, I'll be able to collect as much as different styles of utterances with uh, coming it from different people because a uh, user, uh, you know, uh, two different users might give two different inputs or they have their own texting style and I want to capture that and see whether my bot is responding uh, according to that as well. And it is uh, understanding it correctly as well as well. Sure thing. Yeah. So uh, this is what I do with crowd testing. And end of the day, I collect all the utterances and I do the analysis just the way we did it here uh, with our Potium coach. Analyze the matrix, see what was correctly identified, what was incorrectly identified, and see if I need to train my bot more with the uh, different kind of samples that I've received from the users, or I might want to improvise on the algorithm and it failed to understand it. Okay, so these are the things that I'll be doing as part of the automation um, and uh, crowd testing. And uh, that is it. I'm open to take questions, people, if you have any questions. 
we have a couple of questions so far. So this is by Sakshi Teku. So uh, what are the security or privacy features offered by AI, especially when cyber cyber global global? Uh, so while implementing any application today, uh, even uh, it, maybe it is web or mobile, uh, we have to take care of the data security and uh, the consent of the user as well, right? Because there are a lot of uh, data protection laws that have come up. Same thing you have to keep in mind if you're having a conversation with a user where you need to take the personal information, you need not to, uh, you know, you need not to store that path and uh, that security aspect is what you have to implement. So that is one aspect that you might want to test thoroughly. Is it uh, using that data anywhere or is it, uh, you know, publishing that data? So these aspects you'll have to test. Uh, and also you'll have to keep in mind that it is not breaching any of the data policies as part of your country. And you take the consent from the user as well. Okay. okay. So the other question is... Are both platform dependent, just like mobile apps are driven by what kind of phone, Android or OS you have? Uh, so bots are actually implemented using any of these NLP, uh, you know, um, layers like uh, you have uh, frameworks like Dialogflow or you are using uh, IBM Watson um, and you are using uh, Lewis, Microsoft Lewis. Uh, so there are a lot of such platforms and they have their own, um, you know, way of implementing it. Uh, so you might be using one of these technologies to implement that. But then they also support a lot of different platforms for you to deploy that. Okay. So just like um, our web application is supporting uh, multiple uh, browsers and your mobile applications. I mean, uh, the responsiveness as well, you can operate that on mobile as well. It's the same way you are developing it using one of these and then you uh, can deploy that on multiple platform. It can be uh, one of your application. It can be on web or it can be independently deployed. Uh, thanks, Shama, for sharing your experience with us today.